All right, I want to welcome everybody tonight. Get prepared to take a few moments of worship. Let's turn this down. Pray you all be best by this worship. I really love this. Take a moment and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through this song. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Look, church, don't get that. Hallelujah. 
Everybody that's joining us via Facebook and on our conference call line. I'm so excited about this call tonight. Just want to make sure you all get an opportunity to please tag someone on Facebook and join us. And you can also go to Apostle uh, Joshua Mitchell's Facebook as well. He is live there as well. I'm just really, really moved by um, his, I'm telling you, his humility. I never in my life seen such a you know they if you're in bar uh but to see him over the years i've known you what more than 20 years right oh it's been a long time yes yes it has yes it has and but there's very few and far anointed and humble men of your stature they're very few and far and over the years that you've known me you know i don't like plastic and i don't play with fake yes. people, you know, I don't, I don't fool with them, period. And, uh, but when I begin to get to really know uh, the man of God that's going to be speaking to y'all tonight, I tell you, you know, I was shocked that he still wanted to hang around me. This man is something else. So if y'all have not had a chance to uh, read his bio, I'm going to read part of it for you. But I did send it out via the Internet, and I want to read some now. Uh, of shortness of his bio, R. Joshua Mitchell is a founder and overseer of Kingdom Fellowship Ministries International since 1986, and the name was changed to Kingdom Embassy International Center in 2012. He has also founded Kingdom Ambassadors University since 2004, Council of Apostles International since 2004, and Senior Pastor of King's Temple Center in Humble, Texas, 2003, and First Church of Pasadena, 2014. He has been in the ministry for 29 years. He has received his Bachelor's of Arts in Biblical Studies in 1988. He received his Master's of Divinity in 2008, and he received his Doctor of Philosophy in the year of 2009. And he is married to his wonderful wife, Prophetess Kobe Mitchell, and together they parent three beautiful girls. God has given him the biblical mandate as an apostle of Ephesians 4, 11 through 15, and to fill the office of apostleship based on 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. He is dedicated to the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ and the development of the kingdom of God's blueprint for the 21st century church leaders. The vision of our Joshua Mitchell is to build upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets of the Lamb of God, an apostolic and prophetic ministry where people would be taught and given an example of holiness, integrity, and truth. The ministry has an emphasis of equipping the body of Christ with the God consciousness so that they function in their God-ordained ministry in a manner that glorifies the Father and impacts this generation. He is committed to helping all who come to the ministry and recognizing the ministry gifting and will equip, impart, and activate them to pursue their appointment with integrity, excellence, and with unquestionable ethics to bring hope and restoration through the fivefold ministry gifts of Christ Jesus and so I want to say welcome to you, Apostle. We are ready to hear from you, but I, did, I just want to take for just a minute to give one major announcement, well, actually two, 
and then I want you to go and flow as God has given you to give your prophetic charge for our prep 2018. Uh, right. Want to still give everybody an opportunity to please go ahead and tag someone and come on and join us uh, on this call. Um, wanted to share, many people have, um, I've been paying attention to a lot of people getting uh, their certifications in uh, uh, certified life coaching. And one of the areas that God has moved this ministry in is the holistic, uh, of course, spiritual growth and uh, family and ministry development. But one of the things that I wanted to say is that I'm very excited because we just received a partnership that's going to give you all an opportunity, particularly those people who graduated through ELST, uh, who would like to be certified as a life coach. Uh, We're going to have an informational session coming up very soon, so I want you to be sure and watch your email so you get a chance to meet uh, during our meet and greet, the person who is going to be our partner, who is going to give an astronomical, which I thought was really major, discount for those who uh, graduated through ELST. You would have to be an ELST alumni to get this major discount that they're going to be giving for uh, the life coaching, certified life coach uh, certification. So you'll get more information on that. I uh, just want to make sure I put that out there, let y'all know we got that call today that they want to partner and give that certification uh, for our students. And that doesn't mean that anybody else can't come through, uh, just that you'll, you'll have to be an alumni to get the major discount. But anyway, I also wanted to share, I want to make sure that y'all did get the um, third day, I mean the, second, the first day that I was uh, doing my um, – Shut in. I think I sent that on that recording. If you have not gotten the recording, I will not read it because I appreciate if you go back and hear it because I don't want to spend it. I won't possibly go ahead and talk. Uh, but go on there and listen to the one that I did the second C of the prelude for uh, the, the free message that I did before Apostle comes on. I'll do the prelude messages, and I talked about the second C, which was uh, commonality. You definitely want to hear that, especially if you are a pastor or leader. Um, So the commonality message, that is where, at the very beginning, I gave the message where the Lord spoke to the body on November the 3rd in regards to uh, what's about to come and where we need to be in position about. All right. God bless you all again for joining us. I'm Apostle Murphy, and so glad that you all had a chance to join us tonight. Apostle, thank you so much, because I know God is going to speak through you tonight. You want to go ahead and pray with us before you start? Yes, I would like to do that. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come you, before your presence, Father God, amongst people. Father, we thank you right now for the word that you have for this hour uh, moving forward into the new year. Father, we thank you for the shift that is that has begun and taken place, Father God, and that which you have given me to release to all of us, your people. Father, I ask you to uh, have your way in the hearts of every person that is watching uh, here in the States and worldwide. We thank you in the name of Yeshua Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to first uh, say uh, thank you, Dr. Murphy, for the invitation to uh, be a part of uh, what God has placed upon your heart uh, in terms of the uh, subject matter moving into the new year, the pre-2018 uh subject and teachings that's been going for changing and strengthening of the guards. Yeah, Lord. Before, before I really get started, I want to say to those that are watching me in Brazil, thank you for watching. Um, if you uh, are watching or you were watching earlier and just really didn't see me do anything because there's another uh, person uh, also recording that I'm a part of this. So I'm, I'm kind of speaking to those that are watching me from around the world. Uh, so just want to let you know, Dr. Murphy, we got people in Brazil that are watching. We got folks in different parts of the world as well as here in the states that are watching as well. So yeah, we are excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about uh, this subject here. Uh, you know, it is it's amazing how that if we stop and take a look at what's going on within the body of Christ right now, we can see that um, there are some serious concerns that Father God have concerning his people. And it starts first and foremost that which he has instituted. And we're going to go through a few things here tonight. I'm going to talk to you tonight about where we are, 
what we face and taking the lead uh, as the uh, changing and strengthening of the guards uh, is taking place. Then we're also going to look at uh, a few other um, teachings that, I, that I'm going to be uh, adding in this. We're going to be talking about uh, the reinstatement of apostleship, and we're going to uh, briefly be talking about the next generation apostle or the next generation apostleship um, and that the apostles uh, are operating in that office. So um, let's get started here because I have a lot to cover in a short period of time uh, that, um, uh, I, um, that's that been allotted to me. And uh, we're going to, at the end of this, uh, we're going to, I'm going to make this uh, announcement now just before we end. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll have an opportunity for Q&A if anybody have any questions. But I want to talk about um, this matter of the changing and the strengthening of the guards. So when we talk about the changing and the strengthening of the guards, uh, I do a teaching uh, I taught years ago uh, in a conference that I did uh, titled The Guardian of the Kingdom, The Guardians of the Kingdom. And the Father revealed something to me concerning apostles. Apostles are the guardians of the kingdom. We have, we're supposed to have the best interest of God's uh, uh, kingdom here in the earth realm. Uh, we are the ecclesia that has been uh, called to be a part of the ecclesia, which uh, gives us citizenship within the kingdom of God. And so when we understand about uh, the changing of the guards, the, the guardian, if you will, of the kingdom of God, there are a few things that uh, I've talked about. I actually have 50 different uh, things that I, I bring out in terms of the meaning of, the, the meaning of, of a guardian. And I just want to touch briefly on maybe five of these things real quick. We talk about guard or the guardian, and we're talking about the guardian of the kingdom of God and that of the apostles um, fulfilling the office of the apostleship. Number one, um, one of the meanings of, these, of this guardian is a head official as the warden of a college, specifically an ecclesia, a church or ecclesia warden. Number two, performing or appropriated to the office of a protector. Uh, number three, a ward guard. Number four, a person who guards, protects, or preserves a protector, a defender. Number five, the one who uh, passes out or enforces the laws of God, a person who is entrusted by, by the law or with the law of God with the care uh, of the people of God concerning God's laws and all that God has, has given to us or property or both or another, uh, and it goes on. So I just want to just briefly just talk a little bit about the guardian uh, of the apostle. Uh, in that if you want more information about that, you can, you can talk to me about that at some point in time. But I want to get into this, uh, where we are um, and what, uh, what we face taking the lead. So there are three things that I want to focus on here, three points that is a goal of understanding apostolic leadership or leadership of the apostles, the gathering of uh, of, of leaders in the apostleship, if you will, uh, as well as all the other fivefold leaders and the entire body of Christ. There are three points here that I want to uh, just put in your hearing. Number one, when we're talking about gathering uh, of apostles as Father is making the shift to uh, um, changing of the guards here, number one thing is review. Where we are in our apostolic training. Right now, so if we look at where the church is right now, this country right now where we are, we are in a bad situation here in our country right now. Um, when we look at the church, the church, I mean, I, to a lot of areas to where the church is right now and why we are lacking apostolic power, apostolic authority, because there is a group of people in the kingdom of God or in the body of Christ that uh, no longer, uh, uh, well, have been teaching, rather, that we no longer have apostles. Well, 
that's a whole little different thing all by itself. Number two, we need to examine. Examine what we face in the coming year as apostles. Now, this is going to be very critical, that we examine what we are facing now and in the coming year. There are some things that we are facing right now, and there are some things that we're going to face in the coming year. And then the third thing here is strategize. Strategize on how to take the lead as Christ's apostles in the years to come. So as Father is a changing and strengthening of the guards, the apostles, then these three things are critical points here, review, examine, and strategize. The other thing that I want to talk about in this, establishing Christ's eternal kingdom embassy. It's, uh, uh, there are three things here. Uh, it expresses well the magnitude of the call put up on us from the Lord. Number one. Number two, the future of apostleship will see apostles in the following light. They will be recognized as God's eternal kingdom generals. Let me say it again. Apostles will be recognized as God's eternal kingdom generals. So get ready and get prepared for what Father is doing. Then there are about uh, maybe 14 things here that accompanies all of this. These are areas that I'm going to give you now that we're going to find ourselves in, and for those that may have been in some of these areas, not just to the church, but to the world. We're not just called apostles to the church, though we are called to the church first, to the ecclesia first, but we're also called to the world. And so there are 14 things that, that we may be addressed by. Number one, we may be addressed by a prime minister. When you look at prime minister and apostleship, you're going to be surprised to know the similarities. You're going to be surprised to know how actually a uh, prime minister is a part or considered as a system of apostles. Then, of course, we know about ambassadors. We know that because of what the, script, or what the, what the meaning of apostle is. We know that apostle is also a messenger, a divine agent. Number four. Number five, a diplomat. Number six, governors. Number seven, leaders. And then we get into number eight, indoctrinators. Number nine, change agents. Number 10, warriors. Number 11, healers. Number 12, restorers. And number 13, mediators. And number five, we are those that lay the bridge so that we can break the connection to where the bridge has been missing in the ecclesia and to the entirety of the world. These are very important areas that we as apostles are going to need to understand, need to come into, um, and so forth and so on. So we need to follow and see what Father is doing here in these areas. Bless the Now, during the years to come, apostles will find themselves in one uh mediatory or arbitration encounter after another, reconciling and averting the fallout from what God has earmarked for the upcoming decades. Now, that's important. There are some things that is shifting, no doubt. While he is shifting and changing and strengthening the, the, the guards of apostleship, there are some other things that's going to fall out in this in the ecclesia, first and foremost. Why? Because judgment must begin where? At the house of God first. So we've got to get ourselves prepared for what Father is doing. Then it is in this capacity that apostles and the embassies come uh, together and come to form. Then the reality, the spirit of reality that has been concocted and uh, exaggerated by the world for years is homing in on the house of the Lord. And it is. There's a lot of things that has been allowed to come into the ecclesia, uh, into the body of Christ, not the kingdom of God, but the body of Christ, glory to God. The body of Christ, the ecclesia, what I consider is that we are citizens in the kingdom. But God is not putting up with stuff that is going on within his body, within his ecclesia. He's not going to have it in, the, in his kingdom. So there are things that we as apostles are going to have to become educated in and understand what Father is doing and move as he is moving. So 
so that That's we right. can use us to bring the necessary correction to the entirety of the body of Christ. Now, let's talk a little bit about the reinstatement of apostleship, because this is an area. I've talked to many people. I'm, I'm a part of many different prayer groups, and one of the most important parts that is missing in many intercessory prayer groups is apostleship, the apostle, and the prophetic, the prophet, the true apostle, the true prophet, are, are operating and working together. Whenever there's an absence of, of the office of apostle, which is apostleship, and wherever there's an absence of the office of the prophet, the prophetic, then you are not going to have the fullness of the authority that we need that we need and supposed to be operating in as the That's people right, are. Apostle. You come on and yeah. talk. You got it. Yeah. Now let's talk about apostleship here. Apostleship is about understanding. I want you to please hear this. Apostleship is about understanding the greatest institution, the kingdom of God and his ecclesia. They are to be governed by his apostles. Mm-hmm. Now, that does not make us greater than anybody else or trying to usurp authority or being a bully or something of that nature. It is the order of God. It's the plan of God. It's how God instituted this thing. When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, I know some of y'all wonder when I was going to go to Scripture. I know it by memory because I, I, I lived this stuff. It says, and God set in the church. So the first thing we see is Father God setting in the church first apostle. Now let's deal with something. The word set there in the Greek means a place of authority. So what Father God has done has given a place of authority to the office of apostleship. What you read in 1 Corinthians 28, uh, 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 verse, uh, chapter uh, 12, verse 28, is the office of the apostle, not the apostle right there. The office of the prophet, not the prophet right there. The office of the teacher, not the teacher right there. Because it is the Father that is instituted an office in order for those in Ephesians chapter 4 that have been called to, to uh, partake and be a part of the gift of Christ to fulfill at least the three offices of apostle, prophet, and teacher. See, a lot of people don't understand that. You have to make the differentiation between 1 Corinthians 12 and Ephesians chapter 4. Bless the name of the Lord. Now, this is very important. It is apostles first, or it is first apostles, which is what the Scripture says. The word first is the Greek word proton. It means the first, the only first. Glory to God. So why is it that we have pastors that are trying to, that have put themselves in position over the apostles? That doesn't mix. That's not the word of God. We are out of order in that area. Bless the name of the Lord. I can talk a lot about that, too. Let's go on further uh, about apostleship. Apostleship is eternal because it is God. God is apostleship. It is the office. God sets this thing. It is eternal because it is God. It comes from God. Apostleship is about the one who has given the office to represent. Glory to God. I love this. God putting someone in an official authority. It is the character or nature of God. So what comes with the office of apostleship, first and foremost, it is eternal. It is the character and nature of God. So you got a lot of people who call themselves apostles do not understand what they have set themselves into. This is not something to be taken lightly. It is not a title, number one. I'm going to deal with that in a minute, too. It is not that, glory to God. It is the very embodiment of Christ, Ephesians chapter 4. He gave gifts to men. Bless the name of the Lord. For those of you that have not, have not had a true calling of Father God, in this area of apostleship, you better go back and pray and ask the Father to reveal to you the motive of your heart because yes, Lord. it is very real. And people need to understand you cannot just assume something because it looks glamorous. Yeah, we got a lot of men that glamorize this, but it is not glamorous. Let me tell you. Let me tell yes, you. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The area of apostleship since 1990. And I'm telling you, it is not glamorous at all. It is not. You understand what this is really all about. You can't play around with this thing. Let's move on. Now, there's something about the apostolic power. We talk about apostleship. We talk about apostles. Then you have to understand 
apostolic. Apostolic is the power contained in the office. That's what the word apostolic, one of the meanings of it, it is the power of Yeshua Jesus contained in the office that Father has given. It speaks to warfare. So when you look at, uh, for, for instance, there's a synonym that is uh, the same meaning as the word uh, apostolic, it is the word warfare. So when you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, it says uh, something to the nature that um, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not corner, but they are mighty through God to the putting down a stronghold. The word warfare there is synonymous to the word apostolic, and it means the power of Yeshua Jesus. It also means that we as apostles have to contend with carnal-minded people. You can check it out and look it up yourself. Look up the word warfare in the Greek. It's going to tell you exactly what I just said, plus some more. Bless the name of the Lord. So when we talk about apostolic, we're talking about the power of Yeshua Jesus contained in the office that the Father has given to the church. It speaks to warfare. Bless his holy name. Let's go on, apostolic reformation. So as we're talking about this changing and this uh, strengthening of the God, there's a reformation that is taking place of the apostolic, of the apostleship, of the apostles. The ecclesia is now experiencing another reformation, and that means God, God is working changes in his people, changes that affect every area of our lives if we let it, glory to God, if we obey him, rather, particularly in the way we think and of our mindset. See, this is the issue. The issue is how we think. So when you go back and look at Second Corinthians chapter 10, when we start talking about warfare, it first starts with the individual that's in the body of Christ. It speaks to the thoughts. It speaks to your bad thinking, your bad thoughts, your bad mindset that is coming against God. That's the reason why the word warfare is synonymous to the word apostolic. We have to contend with corner-minded people. Glory to his name. Change is uncomfortable, but it is necessary. It's yeah, a lot of you want to Change is uncomfortable, but it is necessary. Very That's necessary. the name of the most high. Reformation is a radical process involving uh, amendments, correction, ratification, preservation, reclamation, recovery, salvation, rescue, and deliverance. All of that is a part of reformation. Glory to God. The ecclesia and all who are part of it at one time or another will have or must experience all of these areas if you're going to be reformed. Reformation means to strengthen, to strengthen. Notice now, notice, Dr. Murphy, God gave you changing and strengthening of the God. So part of the strengthening is reformation. Glory to God. God is reforming. Glory means to strengthen thoroughly, ratification and restoration, etc. Bless the name of God. A time of restoration is a season of, 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 of a, a revolutionary change. You have to understand that. Let me say it again. A time of reformation is a season of revolutionary change. It is not the season for the fearful and the faint-hearted. It is the season for the boldness of the apostolic anointing to come forth in your life. Apostles boldly challenge the status quo and force change for the better. They are not concerned with changing the ecclesia for the sake of change. They are concerned with the conditions of the ecclesia. I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, night and day, I have a concern for the ecclesia because there are so many people in ministry, in leadership, all the way down to the doorkeeper, if you will, or to what we may call the layperson. Folks, let me tell you, we are in big trouble if we don't hear what, what Father is saying and follow what he is doing. Glory to God. We better wake up and, and, and obey and do what he has called us to do. They are sent, apostles are sent to correct things that are not in line with God's purpose for his ecclesia. Hallelujah. The apostolic anointing helps to keep the ecclesia current and relevant uh, with each changing generation without compromising. Outdated and outmodeled ways of ministry must be changed in order to touch each uh, new generation. The spirit of reformation is a spirit of change. It contains the new thing that the Lord is doing in any given era. 
Reformation blesses and strengthens the ecclesia and keeps the ecclesia moving toward the fulfillment of the Great Commission. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you, this is, this is great to me. This is awesome. Whenever there is a need for reformation, the Lord sends forth apostles. Watch this now. Apostles have the ability to pull down the strongholds of traditions and bring forth new revelation. Apostles operate and minister under a reforming anointing. When the ecclesia is out of order and not in proper form, there is a need to reform. Apostles have the discernment to know when the ecclesia is not in its proper form. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. The spirit of the reformer. And if by these things you are not reformed by me, this is what the scripture says in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 23 and 24. And if by these things you are not reformed by me, thus says the Lord, but walk contrary to me, then I also will walk contrary to you. And I will punish you yet seven times for your sins. Now, I didn't write that. That's in the word of God. All right? The spirit of the reformer that uh, real apostles operate by is to uh, bring the people of God back into proper alignment, back into proper form and proper order. Bless the name of the Lord. Watch this now. Reformation is not new. Even in the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century was not the first Reformation for the people of God. The book of, uh, excuse me, the Lord spoke of Reformation as early as in the book of Leviticus. The beginning of the New Covenant to the Apostle was also a time of Reformation. The Lord is always concerned about the shape and form of his ecclesia. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. One of the functions of the apostles is to bring the ecclesia into proper form. Apostles are concerned with biblical order. I am, we are, supposed to be concerned with biblical order. And wherever we see people are out of order, we have the responsibility and the obligation to correct that. Now, there are times when you are at different places that you've been invited to, you have to be led by the unction or by the leading of the Spirit of God if he wants to deal with that at that time. I can give you a couple of examples. I've been out in a couple of places where the Holy Ghost would not let me sit while stuff was being talked about and, and preached about. That was completely out of order. And I had to deal with that, and that was some years ago. I won't go into that right now, but you have to be led by the Spirit of God in that, in, the, in those areas. But if you are a senior leader of your ministry, of your of your fellowship, then you have the responsibility. You don't have to wait for the Spirit of God to tell you what to do. You already know what you yeah. need to do to bring the people back in alignment. Bless the name of the Lord. If the FCC is not in, 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 in correct form, the apostle will come and the spirit uh, come in the spirit of the reform. God will send apostles to bring reformation to his ecclesia, which is what he is doing. Look at what Hebrews chapter 9, verse 10 says. Hebrews 9, 10 says, uh, concerning only with foods and drinks, various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the times of reformation. So there are things that have been imposed upon the body of Christ that is not concerning or not about the things of, the, of, of God or his word, what the word tells us. These are things that man has imposed upon the body of Christ, but there's a reformation taking place right now. There's a reinstitution taking place right now that apostles are going to bring of the reformation. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Now, there are times of reformation that are predestined by the Lord. There's also a release of the apostolic anointing to bring about the change ordained by our Lord. Hallelujah. And that is going on right now. Watch this now. Religious systems that have been in place for years prior to a reformation are the greatest enemies to God's divine order. Did you hear that? Yes. Religious systems. And I right. you know religious systems. They have been in place for years. Prior to what God has said in the past, and we revert it back, and now what he's about to do or what he is doing now in bringing reformation, but yet they are coming against what Father is reforming concerning his church. Hallelujah. But we can't relent. We've got to continue to move forward. Religious systems that need reform serve the interests of the leadership of that system, and it, and it very well do. And they are usually a reformation's greatest opponent, and it is. Anytime 
someone that say that they are an apostle, say that they are a prophet. Oh, man, don't go around certain different uh, 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 denominations, man. You're going to be ousted out. You're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be talked about. And they must don't read the word. That's what I'm saying. They must don't know what the word of God says. Because how can you do away with apostles and prophets and yet still want to cling to and hold to pastors, teachers, and evangelists? Well, there are five gifts, Jesus said. Not three. Five. Five gifts. The apostle, the prophet, evangelist, the shepherd, pastor, or teacher. Five of them. So how can you say two of them is no longer for us today? Well, if you're saying that, none of them are for us today. That's right. That is, a, that is a oxymoron. If you're going to say two of them don't exist today, no, that's not scripture. You need to read the word of God again. You need to you need to stop going to those cemeteries. I'm sorry. I mean them seminaries. <laughs> and go somewhere to really get taught the word of God. That's the name of the Lord. It is every time God sends an apostolic person or a group of apostles to come and bring reformation to his church or to his apostille, you're going to find those that are going to resist. In the body of Christ, you got to press through. you got to press through. And as we've been pressing through, there are people that have been coming out of denominationalism, if you will, and really understanding what the Word of God is really saying to us. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That need reform serve the interests of the leadership of that system, and they are usually a, uh, a reformer's greatest uh, opponent. During the days of Jesus and the early apostles, Sadducees, all those that couldn't see still, the Pharisees, they, they can't see, had much to lose in a reformation. They had much to lose concerning their position. So when you start talking about reformation, it's going to challenge the position of many of these leaders. It's going to challenge whatever power that was given to them by the people and Satan, if you will. It's going to challenge the control that they once had so they thought they had over the people of God. And that's the problem. That is a, one of the major problems that Father is dealing with. That's why it's important for real apostles and real prophets, real fivefold leaders to rise up. Shout hallelujah. The early apostles were, per, were persecuted for these leaders uh, by these leaders in order to prevent the completion of a reformation. The same thing as they went through, we're going to go through too. But I have good news for you. That good news is you have to have apostolic boldness. You have to have apostolic boldness. And Say it again. This is what Acts chapter 4, 31 said. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Yes, apostolic Lord. boldness. Boldness. You have boldness. You cannot walk oh, yeah, in the same tenant. You can't walk in timidity. He's not giving you the spirit of timidity, but of power. Yes. Come and a sound mind. Come That's on. right. It's time to stop being a spaghetti sign, a weak backer. It's time to stand up and be, be kind of strong as an apostolic warrior in the army of the Most High God. Shout hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. In the midst of persecution comes apostolic mode. It does. Apostolic reformers are noted for their boldness in preaching the truth in spite of persecution and even death. Every time persecution really hits the, the ecclesia, the church gets more stronger. And that is done by design. God allows that to happen like that. The more we go through persecution, and the, uh, it's going to call, cause us to call on him even more, and the more we call on him, the more boldness that he's putting in us or we're having in him, the more of his, of, of his apostolic power that he's given to us. Child, hallelujah. This is awesome to me. Hallelujah. Uh, Intimidation is a tool of the devil to stop reformation. Let me say that again. Intimidation is a tool of the devil to stop reformation. We're talking about changing and strengthening of the God. Hallelujah. Or reforming of the God. The old God, some of those have died off. God is raising up new gods now. He has new uh, 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 God's that's been in obscurity that he's bringing to the forefront now, that he's bringing to the light now. Shout hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling hallelujah. you, God, watch this now. When the epithelia comes into proper form, it will fulfill the plan of God in the earth. 
Until then, the enemy will use every method at his disposal to stop reformation. But one of his major weapons is is intimidation. Do not be caught up in intimidation. This is what uh, Acts 4.29 says. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Now, if you do find yourself becoming a little afraid or a little stirred, if you will, or intimidated, go to this scripture, Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Now, Lord, look upon their threats. Grant to me your servants that with all boldness I may speak your word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you all, but I'm 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 shouting over here, man. I'm having a great time over here. Me too. And leaders who desire to maintain the status quo uh, for their own benefit would use threats against apostolic reformers. But apostolic reformers have the anointing and boldness to bring about reform in the face of such opposition. That is so absolutely true. We see it throughout the Old Testament with apostolic types. We see it in the New Testament with the apostles. Glory to God. They are hated and called troublemakers because of their message, but they bring to the echo field what is needed most, reformation. That yes, is Lord. Right now, this reformation within the entirety of the body of Christ. So Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through 21 says this, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing, times of refreshing, may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive unto the times of restoration. That's what we're talking about. Or reinstitution, or restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So Father has been speaking like this since the world began. He didn't just start. He's been talking like this since the world began. So there's been issues and concerns in this area uh, in the body of Christ all the way back to the children of Israel. Bless his name. These yeah, verses speak to times of refreshing and times of restoration. There are seasons when God refreshes his people and also seasons when God restores truth and ministries that, that's been lost through sin, neglect, and tradition. We are now in a time of restoration or restitution of apostleship, and apostolic ministry to the ecclesia, first and foremost, before we pitch out into the world. The word restitution comes from the Greek word uh, apotastasis, meaning to reconstitute in health, a uh, whole uh, organization, restore again. So watch this. Dr. Mercer, as I was uh, just kind of going over my notes earlier, the Lord uh-huh. spoke this to me. This is not the first time he spoke this to me, but he spoke this to me as the first century apostles, the first century church in the book of Acts, started out in apostolic grace, apostolic power, amen, as God's apostles, walking mm-hmm. with prophets, and uh, being accompanied on occasion and evangelists, if you will, and some teachers around. Now look at where we are from the second century all the way to where we are now. There has been an absence of apostolic authority, apostolic uh, power within the totalitarianism of the body of Christ. Now, I'm not sure it's not there in us, but in the totalitarianism of the body of Christ, the apostolic power and the mantle of apostleship is not there. That's right. In different spaces. But watch what he told me. He said, such as the first apostle started this, the last apostles before Christ comes is going to end this. Glory to God. And yes, Lord. Part of this last generation. That's why if I go into the next uh, 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 talking points on the next generation apostles, I don't have time now because I see my time is almost coming to a close here. But uh, we need to understand, folks, that Father is raising up the next generation of apostles that he is changing the guard. Uh, glory to God. Changing the old apostles, changing the old authority, the old heads, bringing in fresh. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, this is awesome and awesome. Let me see if I can get just a few of those notes in real quick on this um, on this one thing about the next generation apostles. And this is very important because what I'm going to deal with here is how that the next generation apostles is going to move in in, uh, new moves but in old moves. New moves, but in old wounds. I see. 
every new move begins, every new move begins in the womb of the old. The father and the apostles must be separated from the description of and the function of the apostles. If you don't know what an apostle is, you will not know how to describe an apostle, and you will not know what the function of an apostle is. I don't have time to get into all that tonight. The statement that God is doing a new thing and someone began to act on it, he or she, although inspired by the spirit of change, the Lord wants to ignite is hindered by the old culture. It is the old culture that is trying to stop and prevent this new move of the next generation of apostles. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why, Dr. Murphy, we got to press through and press. We got to fast and press through. We got to press through. We got to break this thing. We got to get yes. rid of this old culture, of this old religious order, how things have been done for decades and decades. In the kingdom, in the kingdom of God, His people, the body of Christ, in His kingdom, we've been doing things not based upon how He has given it to us, but based upon how men have set yes. and uh, replaced what Father has given to us with their traditions. And we need to deal with that. Bless the name of the Lord. Watch this. New moves initially are barred down with mindsets that must be loosened. So we got to pray and loosen the mindset. Of, of these old gods, the old gods loosen their mindset by praying that Father would deal with their mindset. Yes. Establish, establish guards of the spiritual and natural that must be either transformed or displaced. Glory to God. Father is replacing. He's either going to transform or he's going to displace them by replacing them with the new apostles. Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah, I'm almost Lord. done here. Glory to God. Jesus gave a parable. He says, he says of the old wine skin, of the old wine, the old garment, the old cloth, uh, take hold of, of uh, at that stage because new words are often. Watch this. New ways of saying the same old things are all people hear until the Lord forces his chain on the ecclesia. I'm tired of hearing the same old new words or same old old words. Same old old words. You know, one of the things, God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. We heard that. God is doing, doing a new thing. Yes. Okay? Let's define what he's talking about. You're pulling it out of the Old Testament. The word new thing means a refreshing. That's <laughs> right. If you want to look at it in the Hebrew, it means a refreshing. So what Father's doing, he's not doing something brand new. What he's doing is refreshing what he had already established. That we got yes. away from it. That's the name of God. Oh, you are starting right now. Claims of fresh new revelation from God initially received lukewarm reception because they lacked the accompanying power to alter what people come to know and recognize as God in action. So if you are still caught up in this old mindset, this old tradition, when something comes new or when not, not it's a brand new, but refreshing. When God does this refreshing, it brings back apostolic order by uh, using his apostles, and they're going to apostolic power. Glory to God. Folks, let me tell you something. There are going to be things that's going to happen within the body of Christ that people that have been caught up in this lukewarm mindset of the same old status quo, they're not going to be able to accept what you're bringing. That's why you got to pray that God deal with the mindset. Hallelujah. The Lord must impose his change on his body. But he does, but how does he do it? For one, by removing or reducing his favor from his, from his own mess, uh, uh, messages and messenger and their words to sound hollow and repetitive or non-appealing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end right there and close by saying this. If you're paying attention to many of the big names that you have seen plastered on some of our Christian uh, television stations. You don't hear about a lot of these people anymore. And the That's reason right. why is the very thing that I just said here. God has removed his favor from all of these old messengers that saying the same old stuff. God has allowed their words to become hollow and repetitive or non-appealing. People are hungry for truth. People That's are hungry right. for the unadulterated word of God. They are hungry. Let me tell you this, in closing, if the church don't act right and repent and do what we're talking about here, what the Word of God is talking about here, you are not ready for the onslaught of the, of the demonic ram that is already uh, up in our face right now, and it's going right. to be worse. And 
if you listen, if you don't understand or don't want the apostolic power, you already do it. I don't care what they told you coming up in your church or in your seminary, if you are not wanting to operate and walk as the first century church walk in apostolic authority and power, you're doomed already. Bless the name of, of the Lord. Doctor um Doctor, uh, there's much more I can say here, Doctor Murphy, but I know my time is, is almost to an end, and we want to open up the floor. If anybody have any questions or yeah. uh, talk more that they want to say, yes, we want to open the phone line up now to see if there's anyone that have any questions or comment. Well, Apostle, I tell you, I truly was blessed tonight, and I pray that those that are on the Facebook were blessed as well. I'll be uploading this to my YouTube channel to make sure that everybody can get to share. But I wanted to say this, you know, what he was saying is so true. You know, apostolic, in this hour, we have a lot of people that's calling themselves apostles, and they're not packing no power. One of the things that we need to know is that in this last day, as you said, people are hungry. They're looking for the supernatural. And and we don't have those signs and wonders that we're supposed to be packing that power. You know, what is wrong? You know, we need to understand that this true reformation is not just title-bearing. You know, this is a functional anointing. And we've got to make sure that we're functioning in this call, you know, and in this anointing rather than just saying that we are because the devil knows who you are and what you are carrying. And most of the times he knows if it's tainted, he knows if it's titled up. You know, there is a difference. And so I'm just so uh, so elated about your message tonight, and we definitely got to have you come back again and talk to us very soon about these extremes, you know, that people are moving into and not, you know, really in the movement of apostolic, you know, mandate. This is very serious um, because people right. are playing around. The devil ain't playing. And you're right. We've got to make sure that we're positioned to know who we are and to understand the fullness of this, because you're right, without the prophetic, and without one is kissing the other, you know, we don't have the fullness of the Godhead to make sure that we're really, really moving in the full mandate of apostolic power and authority. It's very, very important this last day. The devil knows. He knows who's back in the power, trust me. That's right. He knows. And so I want to open the line up now to see if there's any uh, questions on the Facebook, we'll start there first. If you got any questions, you can go ahead and type that in, and I'll make sure I refer that over to him. And I'll turn over to the uh, conference call line, and we'll start out with, uh, I'll call out your uh, first, I mean, your last four numbers. And if you have a question, I'll go ahead on and release your line, I mean, open your line up one at a time, and you can tell me if you have a question. So we'll start out and see how many we can get done here in about five minutes. Let's see. The last two numbers, the last three numbers is 026. Uh, do you have a question or comment? I've opened your line. 026. The last two numbers, three numbers, that is. No question or comment? Thank you for joining us. Uh, the last three numbers is one three six. Do you have a question or comment? One three six. The last three numbers. Do you have a question or comment? Blessing, blessings, Apostle Gardner. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, bless you. Yeah, God bless the Apostle who spoke into her heart and into her mind. And it's just it's an awesome move of God through him. And I could hear the glory of God descending even in our home here. And it's such an untiming right word. And now word we need to be taught. And the people of God who are not understanding what the apostleship is needs to understand that in this hour, to make that shift and to go back in the presence of the Lord and say, God, I need help. I need to be taught. I need to go back to basics. Am I flowing in the apostleship or am I just as you said, naming your position. So I thank God for that word. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, Apostle Murphy. God bless, bless you all for joining you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Praise God. Okay. No, Dr. Murphy, um, this, is, this is a very, very important critical area uh, in the body of Christ. Um, when we talk about apostleship and apostle and apostolic, 
very, very critical part because, as you know, there, uh, there, there has been a, a surge of individuals that uh, have come up, uh, man, within the last five years, really within the last three years that I know that were pastors, and then all of a sudden they're apostles. Well, worse than that, they put they changed the name on the outside of the church. I was just driving down Homestead one day, and I said, what? Uh-huh. They got Apostolic Church Baptist? What is that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, oh, my God, just change, put Apostolic Outdoors on the sign. Right, right, right. That's, that's serious. That's serious. Yeah, understanding of what, what, what it is all about, and just because they went somewhere and probably heard somebody or watched some YouTube or some preacher or some apostle or whatever, and um, had an experience and now, you know, doing that ordeal or whatever the case may be, you know. Um, what I do believe, though, Father is challenging um, those of us that have been matured in this area. Now, we're still maturing. We have That's not right. Time. We are still maturing, but we have come to a level of maturity that there's a responsibility laid up on those of us who are maturing to help those who are truly called of God to mature, as the, as, the, uh, as the young lady said a moment ago. But then for those who just assign this to, to their name, they want to be an apostle or they uh, want to flow in the apostolic without properly understanding it, you know, uh, those things need to be checked, you know, and um, it's important. Now, I'm going to say something that I don't know some people on this call or watching may may uh, find it, uh, you know, they may disagree with me on it or may find it controversial. But based upon the word of God, uh, a bishop has no right ordaining an apostle, that's number one. A pastor has yeah. no right ordaining an apostle. How about this? A prophet does not have the biblical right to ordain an apostle. Better yet, a bishop has no right to ordain another bishop. Nor does a pastor have the right to ordain another pastor. You know who the responsibility it was given, first and foremost? It was given to the apostles to go around and ordain. Then, as they are ordaining young apostles that had a dual uh, uh, office, apostles and uh, bishops, as Paul tells Timothy or Titus to go to Crete and ordain elders, right? But it was the apostles that raised up Titus. It was the apostles that raised up Timothy, that mm-hmm. trained these guys in the apostleship, and they were going about doing the work of bishop as well, going and doing what the apostles had assigned them to. If that is not happening, then all of what has happened over the decades has been out of order, among many, many other things has been out of biblical order. Now, now, if someone disagree with me on that, let's have a dialogue about that, but I'm staying true to the word of God. Well, I'm glad you're bringing that up, but that's something that we do need to discuss because, you know, I've yeah. always watched different leaders, you know, like pastors, how they ordain the different ones to bishops and things like that, and I'm like, well, where are you at? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying, it just, I just question those things. But I really believe that, you know, what you're saying, I want to go ahead and do some research, and I'd love to have a teaching with that from you, too, uh, because I know over the years, um, the in-depth teaching that you have taught over the years, I have really, really, really been moved by those, and I have done some research on the apostolic as well. But I do know that that's one area that I'm truly not familiar with, you know, and I would love not to necessarily have a dialogue. I'd like to have the teaching because that's what we need. We need to recognize if you don't know something, you need to be seeking it. And you know, don't Amen. mean you have to. Don't mean you have to eat it. Why not just try to learn of it, and then let the Lord tell you. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to, you know, you have controversy about it. That's the way I feel about it. Because people always want to go now. Nah. Well, then won't you see God? Because I believe if God gave you revelation, then now we need to. If we don't agree or we have question marks, then we need to be going to God too. That's right. Well, you know, I'll be more than happy. Just call me whenever. I'll be more than happy to do whatever is necessary by way of teaching. Amen. But, uh, as you know, and anybody that's ever been in any one of my classes, I'm going to keep you in the Word. 
I'm going to stay true yes. to the word. I'm going to define the word from its original uh, uh, writings, the uh, Hebrew and the Greek. I'm going yes. to go find the uh, find the least common denominator. I'm going to go to the to the smallest to the least I can go. I mean, I'm going to look for it. Yes, he is. <laughs> I studied this for years and years. That's why I've written books on this. I have several books that I've written on apostleship. And yeah, well, while we're uh, there, I want you to go ahead and share, you know, about, you know, where you're located, your church, your ministry, what you're doing with the broadcasting network. I mean, because you used to take shows for me. <laughs> yeah. You're really excellent well, you know, at what you do. Well, praise God. Uh, thank you for, for the opportunity to even share that information, uh, Kingdom Broadcasting Network is my um, um, next to teaching is my number one thing that I'm doing now. I am not really pastoring a congregation of people. What, I, what I'm doing now is I would like to say I'm more like teaching or maybe mentoring leaders. Uh, yes. Every Saturday we have a class and we have leaders that come to the class and uh, God has uh, allowed me to uh, impart uh, into them some deeper truths and deeper revelation of things that is not even discussed in the body of Christ uh, anywhere, a uh, hollow. Now, uh, there are certain things that I've been teaching on, a lot of people are waking up to uh, in this country and worldwide, uh, but uh, for the most part, the body of Christ is sleep on a lot of revelatory things that Father, won't, Father has been releasing from heaven. But if we're not in a position to hear it, or be in a place to where we can perceive it, then we're not going to know about it. So we have those classes every every Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. here at the studio, at Kingdom Broadcasting Studio or KBN uh, TV Studio here in Missouri City. Uh, it's at uh, the address is 1430 Texas Parkway, Missouri City, Texas 77489. Outside of that, uh, as I've mentioned, I've written several books. I believe altogether seven or eight books. Uh, most of the books are on the apostolic or apostleship. I have a training manual, two different training manuals that is geared for apostles or emerging apostles. Um, and we're working on a few other intercessory prayer books. Uh, I, um, recently, uh, well, a couple of years ago, I released a prayer book called Stratospheric Prayers. You can go on our website at kbntv.tv to order any of our books. You can also go to Amazon uh, on their website. I actually go to my Amazon store. I have an Amazon store now, and you can order our books from there. Um, but if you want to find out more information, you can uh, just call me at 281-896-5614, or you can email me at uh, joshuamitchell1 at yahoo.com or my uh, ministry email is info at kbntv.tv. God bless. Now, you know you said that so fast. You, you, I thought people told me I talk fast. So you need to say that slow again so they can get that phone number and that okay. um Okay, so, uh, so if you want to make contact with me, my telephone number is 281-896-5614. One four two eight one eight nine six five six one four, and um, my uh, two emails are one is Joshua Mitchell one, and that's the number one at yahoo dot com, Joshua Mitchell one at yahoo dot com, and info at kbntv dot tv. Now, Dr. Now, Murphy, saying you know, KB I'm, like Victor is what he's saying. Right, kbntv.tv. So TV is in there twice, kbntv.tv. I want to talk a little bit about our television network. We, uh, we are in the midst of, uh, of 10 years of celebration. We just turned 10 years old November the 14th of this month, and uh, we're in the midst of 10 years of celebration. Uh, of broadcasting worldwide, as I stated, we got people watching from various parts of the world, in Brazil, in Africa, in Europe, and different places around the country, here in Houston, uh, this Facebook uh, live broadcast. Uh, but um, we, we thank God for the, for, for the milestone of 10 years of broadcasting. I think you remember yes. uh, Dr. I first got started. I called you up. 
way back when uh, you were yeah. on uh, another network at the time, and something happened there, and you came over to be with me for a little while, and uh-huh. uh, praise God for, for I mean, the milestone of reaching 10 years. We broadcast 24 hours over our website. Uh, we have both our Android and Apple apps. Uh, we're on Roku, on television on Roku, uh, but we're, we're about to update so much stuff. We're going on other platforms like Apple TV platform, the plastic uh, platform, and many other platforms that we're going on. We're also uh, an affiliate of a uh, television network in Florida that uh, puts us on cable down there in Florida, so we are seen on cable down in Florida, and uh, that's a great blessing. Uh, we started uh, working in uh, Nigeria 2009 and building the presence there, uh, and we got to go back and, and uh, revisit some things there. A lot of stuff has been going on, of course, in Nigeria. And last year when I was in Brazil, we uh, talked with some people there about the idea of putting the presence of Kingdom Broadcasting in Brazil. Part of my assignment is to put Kingdom Broadcasting in at least all six continents if I can't reach the seventh one, which is um, – which is, you know, where the, where the ice is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's kind of a little short overview uh, of where we are and of what we're doing. And, you know, we just praise God uh, for the privilege and opportunity. We have a wonderful host of broadcasters, a mixed group of broadcasters, a mixed race of broadcasters, and it's just God's doing. And they are preaching the word of God. They are ministering a relevant word of the Most High God, and we are excited about it. Well, I'm excited that you um, had the opportunity to come and share with us tonight. I mean, because in this last day, like you were saying, I mean, this is a bold, you know, a bold move of God for this last day for us to really be in the uh, position to be able to come forward and say what we need to say without fear. Um, Because a lot of churches and a lot of religiosity that's going on has really stagnated a lot of people who truly have been called to that particular office, but yet they will not. That you know that mandate, but they will not move for that reason. And so I believe your teaching has been one that I pray that many will go ahead on and listen to when I upload it for that reason, so they can understand that it's not going to be just something that you're going to call yourself. You're going to have to function the power and authority of the last day apostles and make sure we recognize to those marks of the apostles of the apostles that you described tonight that those are going to have to be very, very, uh, how do you say, functional. Otherwise, people are going to be just lost. I mean, they're going to be uh, devastated to see that you're pretending to be someone that you're not. And we've got too many people today who are lost and drifting because they want that anointing. They want that fathering and mothering for the transition of this new, you know, this new reformation that we need to be in for the apostolic call. I don't understand why people won't. Uh, recognize that people are hungry and thirsty, and they really are. They're tired of playing games. They're tired of, you know, being in places that you're seeing as revival, ain't no reviving going on, you know, and you know, and just all about selfish greed, uh, you know. And people are desperate for change, healing, and delivering power. That's right. And so I bless God that you had the time to be with us tonight, and I speak blessings over your ministry and. And nobody else had any other questions or comments. I guess we're going to get off here so we can pray that everybody will listen as long as we've been on here. It doesn't matter. But those who really want to always say fast forward, but you better get to meet. <laughs> yeah, but uh, be right. sure, uh, and uh, like I said, give any other closing comments you like and pray us out. And want to say thank you all for joining us on t- on next Monday. I don't know if you all know, and I'm sure you probably know um, Dr. Jim. Dr. Jim Landry is going to be on with us next Monday sharing okay. about the different types of music that has seduced the body of Christ and leaders for a very long time. Uh, he's going to oh. be talking about the witchcraft that's attached to the music and what a lot of leaders are going to be held responsible for allowing a lot of this seductive music to be going on in the church. And so y'all don't want to miss that. He's going to share from his book, too, a very awesome book that he has in regards to that uh, music that's coming from a lot of different perspectives. And so anything else you want to add? Well, I just wanted to uh, I want to say thank you to those, again, that, that are watching from different parts of the world. 
uh, have chimed in on, uh, have been with us, um, especially um, one of my friends down in Brazil has been online with us since we started and still here. Um, I thank God for that. And I also want to make mention of how God is really moving. I was interviewed uh, last night um, via a live video chat of a very interesting person. I'm sure you've heard of Reverend Sun Moon. You've heard of him? Sun Moon. Sun Moon. You've yeah. heard of I know. Yeah, I've heard, heard, yeah, I've heard of that name something. before. Yeah. Reverend Sun Moon uh, in, in, the, um, in South Korea, um, he, he was one of the ones, of course, he's dead now. He was, he was one of the main ones that taught that he and his wife was the original uh, parents of, the, of humanity. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to do a study on on the, uh, on Sun Moon. Everybody know him by the by the phrase the Moonies. But anyway, okay. his son his son has gotten delivered and gotten saved. He was out okay. out of the family after his uh, dad died. His mother took over, and he was supposed to be the heir of of the kingdom that his father started. But his uh-huh. mother kicked him out because he got saved and started preaching Jesus only, started preaching about Jesus and not all this other stuff that they were taught by their dad. Yeah. Anyway, he interviewed me yesterday, and it went out all over South Korea. And uh, I'm telling you how God is opening up opportunities. Yeah. You know, we talked about the kingdom of God. We t- I talked a little bit about apostleship in the kingdom. We talked really quite a bit about, about God's kingdom. And yes, it was Lord. awesome. And, uh, uh, again, it went across all over South Korea because he's well known there and on the east coast of, of, uh, of, of the United States because he now lives in Pennsylvania. Uh, but God is opening up some, some awesome, awesome doors for yes. of God to obey him. Step in those doors. So I want to say to everyone that's still watching and listening, the doors that Father is opening, uh, he's opening for his purpose and not for yours. They are not for you to shine. They are not for you to claim, uh, I mean, to claim, uh, 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 you know, to have all of this glitter and, and, and fame and all that. It's not for you to claim this fame and all that or to build your name up. It's for him. This is all about him. This is about the kingdom of God. And when we have the right motives and the right perspective in leadership as leaders, I often ask our students or people I've taught in the past, what's your motive for being saved, number one, and for being in, in ministry or leadership? And you there can find something that you hear people say. Well, yes. most of them have no motives. If your motive is not to advance the kingdom of God, That's stop right. doing what you want or get right. Repent and get right before him. I would say to everyone that's, that's still here with us, seek God like never before. Do not come with a laundry list of what you want. Seek his face. Let him talk more than you talk. Listen. Yes. Listen to what he is saying because he is speaking very loud and clear. But if that's you right. all the time in your time spent with him, you are not hearing him. So I want to encourage you to really, really spend some intimate time with the Father. Let him do all most of the speaking. You talk a little bit, let him speak, and you listen and hear the heart of God. Hear the hear his burden. Yeah. Burden for his people. And when you take on the burden of God, God is God's gonna take care of you. He's gonna he's got Hello. You. He's gonna take care of you. And you need to you know, know Pastor, that. I have to say this because yes. you know, you brought this out and I wanna say this before we before you pray. You know, when you said that, it reminded me the scripture that he gave me was Psalms 89. That's why I said they need to go back and listen to the message that I did on the prelude before you came on, on that message in regards to uh, commonality. Uh, but he spoke this word. I'm going to read just a part that he spoke cause that matches what you said. He said, this is the time is very critical for many, and I am working many things for my glory through those who love and obey me, rest in knowing my ways and go with my ways. He said that things will appear that all has dried up, but I am opening fresh manor doors. That reminds me of what you just said. I am opening fresh manor doors 
that no man will glory with. He said, quiet time is so needed for this next dimension of my glory. My connection, he said, with those uh, doors are divine. They will swing open for those who sit at my feet and worship me and listen to me. He said, I am jealous of all the workers of my gifts. So you got to listen to the rest of it that's on the recording. But I want to bring that out. We are doing a whole lot of talking, a whole lot of works, and we're not at his feet to listen to the next move of God because he's trying to position us for the doors that Apostle was just talking about. And this is such a divine revelation of what he said to me and others yeah. that know what he is saying and that can hear God. God is not... How you say, his word will not return board. It's just a matter of time. It may look like it ain't doing nothing, but that's because what the man's natural eye may see. You know how they say, blessed and highly favored, because you could dress yeah. like or look like it, but yet you're not packing anything. You don't have the, all of the anointing on your life, neither do you have the glory of God resting on your life. That's bigger than any money, any car, any house, and anything. Yes. That's very important for us to know. And so that's why he wants you to sit at his feet. And so that's what I'm saying to you tonight. Based on what Apostle has said here, if we want more, it's going to cost you. That's right. It's going to cost. It's going to cost. And you've got to count up the cost. And, again, Dr. Murphy, I want to thank you for inviting me to come and just share a father's heart to all of us. Uh, I want to thank my wife uh, that's been watching and a few people, uh, Pastor Sandy Griffin on Facebook, uh, Apostle Lance Bellany, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Aura, thank you, and, and Terry all the way in uh, Brazil, thank you, uh, 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 Allison all the way in, um, I thank you in uh, League City, I believe, thank you, uh, and the many others whose name I did not call, thank you for watching and uh, being a part of this live teaching on tonight. And uh, if there's anything else, uh, Doctor, I'm going to go ahead on and pray. Amen. You can go ahead and pray. Everybody on Facebook know I love you and thank you, and have a blessed holiday, all of you. Blessed Thanksgiving holiday. Go ahead, Apostle. Father, we, Father, we just thank you tonight for such word that you have spoken in our hearing that uh, resonates in our hearts. I pray, Father God, that every person that uh, have listened and are still listening, um, and have heard the teachings tonight, Father God, will not only just hide the word in their heart as to not sin against you, but begin to put the word into action. Father, wherever we need repentance, we need to repent. Wherever we need deliverance, we need deliverance. Your leaders, Father God, as you're transitioning, as you're changing and strengthening of the guards, Father Hello. God, we do like never before. Thank you. We bless you. Thank you for Dr. Murphy for the work and the assignment that you put on her life. Those that are, are helping her with this and assisting her, Father, we give your name the praise, the glory, and all the honor it is. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen and amen. God bless amen. everyone. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm sorry? I'm just saying amen. God bless. Amen. Well, God bless you, Apostle. I'll be in touch. Okay. God bless you now. Love you all. Thanks for joining us, Chef.